So here we have a 2021 Kia Sorento Hybrid. And this one comes in the S trim level. Silver on black leather. Powertrain consists of a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Made it to a six speed automatic transmission. So as we get around to the front here, we have LED reflector headlamps along with LED daytime running lights. And down here we have 16, or excuse me, 17 inch aluminum wheels. We get passive keys entry on the front two doors. And then the controls for the power windows, power door locks, power mirrors. And there we have our power driver seat with power lumbar support. onto the rear seat. So for this to be a small SUV, not bad legroom at all. I'm six foot three and the seat in front of me is adjusted for someone of my size. And, you know, I can also move the seat back and forth, which helps, but if this weren't in the way, I'd probably be pretty comfortable here. And I can lean the seat back up some as well. But there are rear AC vents there. And then we have a USB and then a 12 volt input there. And there's a view of the front from back here. And there's a third row down and this one's being used by somebody. So we'll go ahead and check out the cargo space. And I have the key in my pocket. That's why it keeps dinging every time I step out of the vehicle. There's the back end there. And this one doesn't have the available power hatch. So just touch of a button and then See if I can get this seat up. Kind of show you the space comparatively with the seat up and with the third row seat down. So there's the room there. You actually have leg room a little bit at least in that third row and then you can just hit this button here to fold the seat down and then back here you also can fold the second seat down as well with the touch of a button and then you just manually put it back up And there we have our passenger seat. I'm just gonna stick these keys in there so it'll stop dinging at me. So next we're gonna just take a look at the engine bay. And there's that 1.6 liter turbocharged engine along with the electric powertrain. Now we're gonna hop in the driver's seat. Cut this air down a little bit. So really nice leather wrapped steering wheel to start out with paddle shifters behind the steering wheel which we'll get back to the steering wheel in a moment but here we have am fm xm radio 
along with Bluetooth audio. And then we also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is very useful. And then I'm gonna go back to the home page. That's the view you can have there. And then you have your options to go through. And what I like is you can actually either from the screen or from the gauge cluster, you can see your energy flow, how much you're using, all of that, how charged the battery is, which I love stuff like that personally. And there's our backup camera there. And if you take a listen, it's a pretty loud chime, which I actually like, but the driver of this vehicle does not. So I might have to unplug that, whatever speaker is controlling that. But down here we have dual zone automatic climate controls. And then we have three USB inputs. One is actually to run off the radio and the other two are charging. And then we have driver and front passenger three stage heated seats on this S. And pretty interesting shifter here. It's a rotary so you can just click it all the way to the left for reverse, one time for neutral, all the way for drive, press P to park. And then we can go through our drive modes here which we just have three, smart, sport, and eco. But we have a downhill brake control here we have parking sensors for the rear. We can toggle there. Camera toggle here, which only works in park. And then we have the automatic brake hold here, along with the electronic parking brake. Pull up to engage, press down to disengage. Pretty good center console space there. And there's a view of the back seat. Pretty good size glove compartment here with owner's manual. And then to the left side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth controls here. We can up and down volume, and then we can hit mute here, and then track list or radio station controls here. And then we can go through FM, XM, and then AM there. And then over to the right side of the steering wheel, we have our cruise control, uh, lane keep assist, and then the actual cruise control functions here to pause and resume all that. And then these two are for the gauge cluster. And I really like this gauge cluster because you have plenty of options to choose from and what you want to view. So I like to keep it there, and then I like to keep it there just for fuel efficiency there's our push button start and finally here's our key fob and that's the remote start there but next we're going to go ahead and take this kia sorento hybrid out on the road for a quick test drive So it's probably easy to tell that this is one of my personal vehicles with all the stuff that's still in it, like the Tesla. But um, my girlfriend cleaned it out. So she said she did. It's cleaner than it usually is, but that's what all that stuff is rumbling around the back. I will say, which I have a lot to say about this car because I know it like the back of my hand. Um, the hybrid powertrain, it has its good and bad, but I like it because you don't have a CVT. And that really makes a big difference, you know, when you want to use these paddle shifters. But also, the just how you're able to drive it is a lot more controlled as opposed to relying on just the CVT giving it power. You have shift points when you're using the engine. That in turn also charges the battery. 
So just really, really great performance. And then we can put the auto hold on. So I let my foot off the brake and it won't roll away. So when you're light with your foot, you can actually get this thing up to speed just using the electric motor and the battery when it's charged up enough. But for driving where I am, that's kind of difficult to do. But especially when you get below that eco point, a lot of the times you can put it on cruise and it'll go into EV mode. And then especially when you're decelerating or using the regen brakes, it'll go into EV mode as well. And it'll tell you when it's the, uh, just the engine and when it's actually just using the electric motor to help with efficiency, of course. I'm just gonna go this way. Another thing I really like about this car is the steering. I really like for the kind of vehicle that it is, how easy it is to drive. And not only the steering, but also just the, the throttle response. Now with it being a hybrid, sometimes it can give a little bit too much power to the engine, but you're also charging the battery with that power as well. So it's never really 100% wasted. And this is the lane keeping system here. It's keeping the vehicle in the lines. It's definitely, which the vehicle will tell you to keep your hands on the wheel, but I definitely recommend keeping your hands on, especially in the city, because it is a bit buggy compared to a, a Tesla or something like that, but that's to be expected. But all in all, a pretty good system for a vehicle that's stickers around $33,000, $34,000. And honestly, this is supposed to get 39 MPG in the city, 35 on the highway. I've experienced more of 41 or 42 in the city and around 33 on the highway. But also, I tend to go over the speed limit. So if you're keeping 70, you might be able to get that 35 on the interstate. But really good MPG numbers. And for something that, when you need power, it's quick for the segment, it really is. Especially for a 1.6 liter four cylinder. That turbo really does do its thing. And the sound system, for it to be a bass system in a Kia, it's actually really good. I haven't had any blown speakers or anything and I like to keep my music pretty loud, but I would definitely, if possible, either upgrade the speakers or go with uh, maybe aftermarket speakers just because I'm a sound guy so most people will not be bothered by it because like I said it's a it's a good system for the money and I'm glad we get to see how this does in the rain it hasn't rained all day till I got in this car But I'll pull up the uh, 
yeah it shows you the energy flow here so it shows how the battery and the engine are actually providing power to the front wheels and then when it breaks the wheels light up and show you how it's regen into the battery and then where your tachometer would normally be on a regular car the left dial actually shows your kind of eco driving your charge when you're hitting the brakes and then when you get above that eco mode just how much power you're actually getting from the powertrain but another good thing about this car is just how the how slow the hood is I feel like if I'm about to hit something I can kind of see if I look over like that because it's not an overly obtrusive hood it's not up and out where you can't really see if you're about to hit something or not which for me wouldn't really be a big problem but for a lot of drivers uh, especially my lady she likes being able to see down on the hood she doesn't like having a big hood because she feels like she's gonna hit something so this is one of the reasons that she went with this vehicle And visibility is actually pretty good. Not huge blind spots, but this one does come standard with your blind spot monitor, so won't be an issue there. And they light up red, so it makes it really clear if something's in your blind spot as opposed to the dim yellow ones that you get on most vehicles. And my girl had a, a RAV4 before she ended up getting this Sorento Hybrid. And one thing that this smokes the RAV4 in is just overall handling for me. I feel like this is easier to drive, more engaging to drive, but also the braking is good. The gas pedal feel is good. And with the 2.5 liter and the six speed automatic in that RAV4, it definitely was a trusty powertrain. I can't really say that for these cause I don't know much about them and they're fairly new, but they just drive. I just don't like how they drive. And you had a sport mode in the RAV4, which would definitely over enunciate that six speed, but it still just wasn't it wasn't engaging so this i feel is a lot better in that sense and when we get back out onto this road this main road I'm gonna go ahead and put in the sport mode and even though it's raining we should be able to test out the acceleration
I'm gonna put it in the sport mode now. <clears throat> and then I'll even test out the paddle so we can see how that does. And then to get it out of the manual mode, you can just hold on to the, the upshift and it'll toggle it off. But it actually had a little wheel spin there in the sport mode, which I haven't experienced in this vehicle yet, except this one time at Walmart, I did that, I remember now. But <laughs> it, it has power, it really does. I think this has like 225 or 235, something like that. 200 something horsepower and you really do feel it when you're maxing that turbo out and most people with this being a hybrid probably won't use it for that but it's definitely nice to have if you need to accelerate for whatever reason So all in all, definitely, I wouldn't say a really good car for the money in this market now because dealers are charging five grand over a sticker and you're paying two grand over a sticker to get a used one. But in a normal day and age for buying cars, especially with rebates and whatnot, getting this for mid thirties is not bad at all. You have all the technology you could want other than the adaptive cruise and it's just a good driving car that will save you money at the pump it really will i'm gonna gas it one good time and as you can see pretty quick but this is gonna bring me to an end of my review of the 2021 Kia Sorento Hybrid S.